Hello and welcome to this week's video. I am Carleen and welcome to my home. This week we are baking a cozy make ahead breakfast. We're going to try and plant some no dig potatoes and just do some winter homemaking now that the weather has cooled down. Thank you for clicking on this video. Let's get into it. If this is your first time here, I am not a waster. I am frugal. I'm creative and resourceful and sometimes a little bit bat crazy. Can I say that on here? That's a nice way to put it. Anyway, welcome to my kitchen. I want this to be a really easy, quick recipe to pull together that I can put in my little brain bag for autumn winter. So I'm not gonna be doing a lot of chopping um, or cubing up. I'm just gonna keep it really simple. I thought I could, you know, layer the um, pears on top and it'll be like a little pretty pattern, but I really don't care enough. I just wanna put it together as quickly as possible and have it delicious and nutritious for my family. The inspiration for today's recipe are the pears that need to be eaten and I didn't even realize it at this stage that moldy one on the top right there ugh, needs to be eaten or not that one doesn't need to be eaten but the rest of them need to be eaten and I'm so glad that I do not have fruit flies because of this lone pear. So I ended up finding a couple of recipes online and then blending them together to create the kind of recipe that I wanted. I wanted this to be a make ahead breakfast something nice and warm a little bit sweet and with cozy sort of spicy flavors but not packed full of sugar and glaze and everything like that because it is meant to be for my breakfast or like a brunch as you know if you've been in my kitchen before i don't always follow a recipe sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't this turned out pretty good except that i accidentally added the coconut oil which i didn't mean to uh because i'd been also looking up a granola recipe and i'd forgotten that i wasn't making granola but still added it in <laughs> anyway it worked out fine let me know if you want me to put the amounts of everything that I've used in the description box below. Let me know if that's something that you do look for when you watch my videos. this little salt and pepper little canister it's so cute it lives by my stove top and it makes me so happy every time I use it I'll share that video below where I went through some of the things that I've gotten for myself for my kitchen if you know me you know that I do not replace anything unless it is completely broke <laughs> unless it is completely broken but I did splash out and get some nice things for my kitchen that just bring me a little bit more joy when I'm in my happy place and using things that are pretty <laughs> Oh, that knife just went straight through to my hand. I could just, let me just rip these apart. There, that's soft. So I'm gonna throw that in my blender here. I'll cut off the little, gross little bruise bits, of course. I actually love the flavor of pear when it's about to turn. Like, not like turn into evil, like vampire style pear, but <laughs> turn bad, even with strawberries, because it feels like it just like sweetens so much more the natural sugars in it like almost like caramelized like naturally those flavors are so much stronger so i got this kilo of pears for a dollar things are never that normally that cheap here but you know the little price wars what's happening at oh, no good wait is that something alive in there no oh good all right we're not going to have four pears we're going to have a little bit less than that the way that we're going uh yeah so coles and woolies are you know being taken to court about their prices being ridiculous so they're putting things down and to be like hey consumers remember us we're not the bad guys but like yeah we remember we remember anyway for different reasons so I'm not gonna bother peeling these because you can cook with them straight up. And because I'm going to be blending it, it's gonna be smooth. We'll be fine. All right, not that little bit there. Okay, I was thinking about cubing up a little bit and sprinkling it on top so it looked all aesthetic and beautiful, but I really don't care today. That's how I feel. Okay, I'm gonna go into the bathroom and blend this. I'll be right back. I wanted to do my dry ingredients first because you know how pear, like pears brown if you like cut them and then leave them open for a bit long. So I wanted to do that last so that they wouldn't be all brown and gross and turn the mixture 
do a yucky color. So let's go do that now. I'm gonna sound crazy or really, really clever or a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B. So you can hear the house is like dead quiet. The big boys are at school, the baby fell asleep not that long ago. I've like shoved a baby blanket under his door so he doesn't hear any noise, but that's not gonna help if I'm just blending the crap out of some pears. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my blender to the bathroom, which is the under, other end of the house. I'm gonna shove some towels under the door and I'm gonna go blend my pears in the bathroom <laughs> because I don't want to wake him up when he's just fallen asleep and we're going to put some blended pears in this recipe. This recipe is a combination of a few that I found some inspiration online and I am going to blend them up. Skins and all, not the cores and little twiggy tree topsicles. Um, so I'm just going to chop them into large chunks, taking the cores out and I'm going to go blend this in the bathroom. This needs a really good scrub, this dish. Can you tell how gross it is from there? Anyway, this is the only one that I've got that has a lid. And I like to just cut it into little pieces to reheat in the morning. So I'm still gonna use it even though I need to scrub it, don't judge me. You can go ahead and add your pureed pear to your dry ingredients. I added a dash of milk just so that I had 500 mils of wet ingredients to add to my dry ingredients. And I am a little bit of a widow when it comes to cracking eggs. So don't mind me, I'm just getting every single last bit of pear out of there because I don't like to waste food. Um, I think my high school teacher, she taught me that you should always crack your egg into like a separate vessel before adding it to your main mixture because if it has gone bad or the shell comes out, you're gonna like ruin your main like bowl of ingredients so I always do that if you wonder why I'm doing that. Thanks Mrs. K. Well it's looking nice and golden. Some cubed up bits of pear would have been nice for a bit of texture for something a little bit different but I didn't have enough spare after I cut off the chunky gross bits. Okay. I'm gonna put that in. Actually smells really good. Maple syrup would have been a nice addition of flavour too. Oh, did my little thing just get in there? Oh, I just missed it. Lucky. Now I had some walnuts here. You don't have to use walnuts, but I think we'll add a bit of protein. Just gonna drop them in there. Do you reckon if they're sticking out, they're gonna get bent? Mm, we'll find out. Okay, and we're gonna use some, I think it's called Demura sugar, which I feel like, is that just raw sugar rebranded? I don't know, I'm just gonna sprinkle that on top for a bit of texture and a little bit of sweetness as well. Okay, put that in the oven for about 20 minutes or so and at 180 and we'll go from there. After pulling this out of the oven, I gave it a light sprinkle with some more coarse sugar for a bit of texture. You could even add some maple syrup. A caramel glaze would have been nice, but I was trying to be healthy. Some of the nuts were on the burnt side, so definitely poke those in to your batter next time, but I would definitely make this again. Now that I'm done in the kitchen, I'm going to plant some seeded potatoes that I got from a local nursery into my garden beds. If you missed that last video, I take you for a first tour around our garden space, which is up the hill, up the back, which I haven't taken you before. Normally we spend a lot of time in the kitchen. I will link that video below on how we created our garden space on a budget. The lady at the nursery said to put these seeded potatoes in a dark space, you know, damp, allow them to take root before putting them in the ground. So that's what we're up to today. I've been wanting to plant no dig potatoes for so long. I just haven't had a space ready for it. So on this afternoon, I am just using my garden fork to aerate the soil and to soften the soil before laying my rooted potatoes on the ground. 
I will link an article or a few articles below that you may find um, useful or helpful if you want to try doing that too. I, when I installed these garden beds, I already knew that I wanted to plant potatoes. So I did like a lasagna style garden bed with some compost, some garden soil, some cow manure, and then I've topped it off with some mulch. And so I'm just going to lay the potatoes on the surface and then I'm going to cover them up with some sugarcane mulch. And then once the potatoes break through that first layer, I'm going to add another layer of a combination of those three things, garden soil, compost, and some mulch as well. And that's going to help them yield more potatoes for less effort and less digging. So I'll keep you posted on how this goes and if it works. That's it for today's video guys. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and hanging out with me as I do some cozy baking for autumn and winter and some gardening as well. It's a beautiful time of year to be homemaking. So I hope that you would join me in my next video. Please hit subscribe as I'm really trying to grow my channel and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss another video from me. Thank you again so much for your time and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.